how to use protein to burn fat and build muscle at the same time. Protein is the single most essential nutrient for anyone looking to build muscle and lose fat, but it's also the most confusing. From how much is enough to which sources are best, everyone seems to have a different take. Today we're cutting through the noise with a science-backed guide on protein. How much do you need? When to eat it? Which sources to focus on? And simple steps to make it part of your day. By the end, you will have a no-nonsense plan to use protein for real lasting results. If you're new here, my name's Adam. I'm a performance nutritionist, personal trainer, and online coach. For the last decade, I've helped people like you lose fat and build muscle without the fluff. And if you're one of my subscribers, welcome back. You know the drill. Let's get straight into it. Protein is essential not just for building muscle, but for holding onto it, especially when you're in a calorie deficit. Without enough protein, it's like trying to patch a tire with duct tape. You're not giving your body what it needs to repair and grow muscle. This becomes even more critical as we age because like all fun things, if we do nothing, we begin to lose muscle naturally after 30 and even more so after 60. When protein is too low, you're losing muscle, your metabolism slows down slightly and fat loss feels like walking up a hill in the snow. So if your goal is to look leaner, feel stronger, or just avoid that inevitable dad bod scenario, protein needs to be a priority. Let's break down exactly how how much you need and how to get it. Okay, so let's settle this great protein debate. The World Health Organization recommends 0.8 grams per kilogram of your body weight. That's 0.36 grams per pound daily. So for a 100 kilo person, that's just 80 grams of protein, aka not even close, if you're trying to lift and change your body. Even for non-lifters, 80 grams is borderline low, with many experts now recommending closer to 1.2 grams per kilogram, especially in older adults, a topic we can tackle in a, another video. Some people will tell you to adjust your protein based on whether you're bulking or cutting, but honestly, that just makes things unnecessarily complicated. Others suggest using lean mass for your protein calculations, but that's just about as accurate as guessing your weight on a roller coaster. Here's the simplest approach. For bulking, aim for 0.7 to 1 gram of protein per pound of your body weight. For cutting, if you have a lot of fat to lose, use 0.7 to 1 gram per pound of your goal body weight. Some argue for higher protein when cutting, but I haven't seen the solid research. Research actually suggests that going above 0.7 grams per pound of your body weight doesn't lead to more muscle growth. And Eric Helms recommends 1 gram of protein per centimeter of your height for those that have more to lose and I think that's a straightforward method that usually falls well within the recommended range. So if you weigh 225 pounds 100 kilos aim for 160 to 225 grams daily. Higher won't hurt but it might limit your carbs which you'd probably rather save for the fun stuff like fueling your workout. And remember there's no need to hit protein to the gram every single day. These ranges are designed to maximize muscle growth and retention. Missing a mark once or twice won't undo your progress. Just aim to get as close as possible most days and don't sweat the small stuff. If you would like to learn how to lose eight pounds of fat in the next 30 days while building or retaining muscle, head on over to the description and join my free course. Total daily protein matters most, but to some degree, timing can give you a little edge. And nope, I'm not gonna tell you to eat protein every two hours like I once did. Here's what actually works. Breakfast. After fasting overnight, your body is ready for some protein. Starting with protein reduces cravings and shifts your body from a muscle breaking down state to a muscle building one. So from catabolic to anabolic. Research shows that in women and adolescents, a high protein breakfast helps control cravings and calorie intake for the rest of the day. Aim for 40 to 50 grams of protein from sources like Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, protein powder, eggs, or lean meats. Then of course, throughout the day, studies show that you don't need five to eight servings of protein, and there's no real limit to how much protein you can absorb per meal. Practically, I recommend spreading protein across three to four meals, and even 
two meals and a shake or two will do. This approach will help prevent energy crashes, improve digestion and help keep appetite under control better than one or two huge servings. Some people also suggest protein before bed to reduce overnight muscle breakdown. The effects are minor and for me personally, it's a big inconvenience. Sure, if you're hungry and you want to dot all the I's and cross all the T's, have around 40 grams of slow digesting protein like a casein protein, cottage cheese, Greek yogurt, or something like that. This will help increase protein synthesis overnight. If you're training fasted, and I'm not a big fan of this for muscle growth, try having a protein shake within 30 to 60 minutes post-workout. Better yet, go for one to 1.5 scoops of protein powder with water and a piece of fruit before your workout to keep your energy high and reduce the muscle breakdown from your workout. Okay, so not all proteins are created equal. So here's a rundown of the best sources. Animal-based proteins are generally more effective for muscle growth due to their complete amino acid content, like lean meats, like chicken, beef, fish, dairy products like Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, and also eggs. Whey protein is also a top choice for its leucine content. Let's say you're vegan, you can still build muscle with quality plant-based sources like soy and pea protein. Obviously you can get protein from stuff like quinoa, beans, pastas and stuff like that. These are lower in essential amino acids, so mixing them like pea and rice can actually help. Vegan protein powders are also a good choice if you need the extra convenience. And in terms of supplement, BCAAs, save your cash unless you're vegan and you need to fill in amino acid gaps but even then i would recommend eaas that's essential amino acids over bcas bcas are just hype instead hit your protein targets with whole foods add in protein shakes as backups here's how to hit your protein targets calculate your daily target use 0.7 to 1 gram per pound of body weight or goal body weight then spread your protein across meals divide your protein roughly equally around three to four meals. If you need 180 grams, that's 45 to 60 grams per meal. Choose quality sources. Start with protein rich options that are based on whole foods like Greek yogurts or like eggs for breakfast or even tofu. Use lean meats like chicken, turkey, fish. I don't recommend snacks as per se, but if you need the extra protein top up, include high protein options like beef jerky, deli meats, protein bars, or a protein shake if you're short on time. In terms of supplements, pretty much cover them there but protein shakes can help you if you're struggling to hit your targets so can well-designed protein bars especially i would say with protein shakes pre and post workout and when you're on the go as well remember to track your progress use a food journal or an app like my fitness pal if you're feeling full recovering well and you're seeing progress you're on the right track if not you may want to make some small tweak. So some bonus tips. Eat protein first in the meals. This helps control blood sugar levels, reduces cravings, and makes it just easier to hit your goals. And I want you to focus on consistency over perfection. Protein doesn't carry over like carbs or fats, so try to hit your targets daily. Maybe fill in the gaps with a protein shake to stay on track. Now let's clear up some common myths. Too much protein will turn into fat. Studies show that even really high protein diets are really high, don't lead to fat gain, even when calories are slightly higher. Excess protein is typically used for energy or excreted. So is a high protein diet safe in the long run? Yes. Research supports high protein diets as safe for healthy individuals, even at really high intakes. So remember, protein is your most powerful tool in terms of fat loss and muscle preservation or muscle growth. By getting the right amount, choosing high quality sources and spreading it over the course of the day, you'll stay on track, see better results without feeling like you're constantly missing out. And that's it for this video. That's all I really wanted to cover. Any questions, thoughts, or feelings, comment below. Any deeper questions, feel free to send me a DM on Instagram. And if you've got this far, thank you so much. Honestly, it means the world to me. And I'd love for you to hit the like button and hit that subscribe button. And also, like I said, leave a comment below. Tell me what you found most useful. Tell me what you found insightful, or maybe tell me what you found confusing. Have the best day ever.
and we'll talk soon.